Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. This time we're looking at a pile of SSDs, and these are the latest Iron Wolf 125s from Seagate for NAS workloads, right? Yeah, they've uh, Seagate's been doing a lot in the uh, NAS uh, specific space with their hard drives and now the SSD lines. So this is an upgrade from their 110 and it offers higher capacities and better performance. Right, so they've got the 125, which is your more garden variety flash drive, and then they've got the Pro 125, which is, if it's not garden variety, what's better than garden variety? I don't know, but in terms of what it means, you have <laughs> less over-provisioning or more, and if you're looking at the specs, there can be some th certain things confusing, but it really comes down to, are you looking for burst workloads or sustained workloads? We'll get into that. So we have a set of four four terabyte uh, 125s for the review. Uh, we've got a couple of these smaller one terabyte drives as well, and you know standard SATA uh, seven mil form factor. I do like the uh, embossing of the Iron Wolf face on there, though. Hopefully, you only see it once. Once when it's going in, but that's got to be worth at least ten to fifteen IOPS. I thought you were going to say ten to fifteen cents, but yes, <laughs> that too. Uh, so overall, standard drive. Let's go ahead and get into uh, the slide deck here a little bit and and show you some of the highlights. So let's uh, uh, get into that. So yeah, Seagate wants just to remind you that they've got for three and a half inch NAS, of course, they've got the Iron Wolf drives. We reviewed the 18 terabyte uh, Iron Wolf Pros, right, recently, yeah. uh, which are their highest capacity, highest performance hard drive. Um, in the middle, we've got a hybrid scenario, which actually we'll take a look at in just a little bit using a QNAP NAS. And then, of course, all performance, you can just smash it with uh, 10 gig and, and SSDs and be off and running. So that's fine, too. As we go into the, uh, the lineup, just as a quick reminder, as Kevin said, the 110, uh, an initial effort from, uh, from Seagate, the Iron Wolf 125 is what we're looking at today. More for smaller NAS, but tops out uh, at four terabytes. Uh, drops all the way down to 250, which, by the way, 250 isn't a lot, but if you're using it as a cache or a tier, you can still get really good performance out of that little fella. Yeah, I think it really depends on where you're gonna focus. If you're going more towards the tiering side or just pure flash, higher capacity is gonna make a big difference. But for the guys looking just to do caching, it's nice having the smaller footprint there. Right, uh, Pro 125, of course, is aimed up at a little bit more, um, mostly endurance, and, and we'll get into that here in a second. And of course, the 510 is their uh, NVMe offering uh, for those uh, NAS systems that offer that higher performance port. At this point, almost all of them do. Synology has a pair of them even in their two bay system. So that is certainly uh, there for those that want a little bit more performance. Speaking of, let's take a look because I think the spec sheet is interesting here and there's a couple things that stand out. So for consumers or for anyone really, looking to compare the, the 125 uh, to the Pro, Pro 125, they look really similar. Capacities are similar. Top line performance because their SATA is similar. Um, but you were looking, Kevin, at the way that Seagate shows the performance. So I want to look at that. And then I also want to look at the uh, the endurance line, the TB. Yeah. So we'll hop between these two charts. Uh, but if you're looking at just the spec sheet, it can be confusing initially because uh, if you're looking at uh, the Pro versus the, uh, the normal 125, you'll notice that random right column, um, it goes from 90,000 IOPS down to 30,000 IOPS on the Pro. You're like, well, what, what the heck? Yeah, I have to admit, it even it even stood out to me because I was looking at the just the top line numbers, the 545 read versus 560, and I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But the important part that it uh, the difference there is the uh, 125 is rated on max IOPS, so that's what you're going to get burst, where the Pro is sustained performance. And that's really what we're getting at here with the 125 is the way the spec sheet's situated, you will get, you know, like you said, these numbers at burst. But if you're in a situation where you're doing heavier sustained operations, if you're in a small business where there's a lot of users or uh, a lot of applications hitting this storage, uh, you're going to want to go with the Pro. Uh, on the endurance, the four terabyte drive we looked at is uh, 5600. 
uh, which is you know, pretty robust for a home user. The uh, mean time between failure is also a little bit lower. When you look at the Pro, you're going to give up a teensy bit of capacity and you trade that for endurance. So that's the, uh, the difference up to that 7,000 number and a little bit higher uh, mean time between failure. So just a little more I know, ruggedized isn't the, the, the right word, but enterprised version of the drive. Yeah, it should be noted that uh, different NAS vendors do have a way to, um, uh, it, for a tech user, it's fairly easy to over-provision a drive and vendors like QNAP, for example, do have uh, areas where um, they uh, will present how much over-provisioning do you want to enable. So there are ways to get increased performance and, or increased sustained performance and higher endurance with a standard issue drive but not all NAS vendors support that. Yeah, actually, that's a good point because QNAP's got that SSD uh, and it's profile char- tool. characterization profile tool where it'll uh, it'll run on the NAS and uh, and scan the drive and, and do a performance characterization of it and then give you some recommendations for how to best use it. Yeah, so if you uh, want to go into it and understand, like, well, what performance boost do I get if I do 5 or 10% or 15 or 20, et cetera, of the uh, over provisioning levels, it'll show you how that ranks out. And you can even do it where, well, how is over provisioning change a rate 1 group or a rate 5 group or right. just an individual drive? and it'll roll through those options. So you can work that on your own if you want. QNAP just has a handy tool to make it easy. Yeah. Okay. So let's take, get back into the performance here. So we looked at specs. Let's skip past this and get into the charts. Okay, so looking at random access, this is an area where Flash will have the improvement. As you can see, we're doing RAID 6 with the hard drives, and this is uh, we did the Iron Wolf Pros, eight of them in RAID 6 and then the uh, group of four of the four terabyte drives in RAID 5 because you're not gonna have as many fail at a given time uh, versus a uh, hard drive group, but it depends on what floats your boat. But in this case, random access is gonna be a lot faster on the um, the SSDs, and uh, we're gonna see higher performance on iSCSI than SMB, but it depends on where your focus is. Okay. So the important thing though is random access is faster. Sequential access, uh, access though, it's gonna be roughly the same because hard drives still do really, really well with sequential access. So this is interesting. So in the 8K workload, the SSDs are obviously crushing and here you see hard drives in SMB even faster. Yeah. Now there are eight drives to four, but. Yeah, this is an area where uh, it really shows your limit by interface, not really the drives themselves. And again, this is small block as we move over to uh, large block transfer sizes the exact same thing comes through. And there are areas where uh, going back and forth, you might see improvements one or the other, but for sequential performance, putting in flash won't really help you a lot. So SSDs are the same speed as hard drives? Well, when you're, when you're interface limited, yes. Uh, can be anyway. So it depends on the workload though, right? It might be that uh, as a cache or a tier, or even as a flash volume for certain workloads, just it's a, your mileage may vary kind of thing. Yeah, and it's important to understand that uh, even if you have one sequential transfer, that's going to be a sequential workload. But if right. you have like four going at the same time, it might be at the end user a sequential transfer, but to the uh, disk group itself, it's going to see multiple transfers at the same time and performance will start to decrease and start looking more of random. So if I'm a creative pro and all I'm doing is transferring my video shoot files once you know, once a day to the NAS or back off the NAS for something else, then I'm probably not going to see a big advantage. Yeah, from flash. single stream performance is going to be pretty close. Okay, but uh, when you start going into the random access or using it as a scratch space, that's where Flash is going to uh, start seeing definite improvement. So we put these drives in the QNAP, uh, the what is it, sixteen eighty five or yeah, the big tower guy. And let's go ahead and switch over to that and take a look at how these drives look and, and some of the options in QNAP and uh, and how you can configure these things. So we've signed in. And yeah, so this is, uh, we ha- currently have a, uh, we have our RAID 5 group uh, pre-built and this is how we had the uh, platform tested where we have our little volume group and then the um, four uh, thick iSCSI LUNs attached into that. Um, but. QNAP does tend to offer some of the most options when it comes to using your flash. So some vendors, you'll be able to configure it as a a volume of just flash drives, or you can do hard drives and use uh, flash as a uh, caching layer. QNAP gives you a little bit more, uh, one additional option, which is pretty cool, where 
you can make your uh, disk group of hard drives and add in uh, flash as a tier. So right. the the main advantage there is you're generally you can items can start being pinned in flash and I have to really warm up. And there's the advantage where tiering adds to the total capacity, not just as a uh, write buffer, you'll actually have increased capacity and kind of so it's more value for your buck. Where do you make that change? What's that look like? Uh, this would be when if you uh, have the disc coming in as a um, uh, new volume or new disc group coming in, uh, you'd be able to add in. Um, uh, you'd be able to select uh, tiering as an okay. option there. So here would be the Q tier. So um, right now we don't have additional extra unutilized uh, SSDs, but if we did, you'd be able to select those and uh, and have it tell what uh, type of RAID type for those uh, uh, flash devices. We didn't practice this, but since we said uh, the QNAP has that that uh, characterization tool, is that uh, available on this particular NAS? Oh, it's available on all their NASs. What's that, what's that look like just while we're here having fun? Um, let's see, it, actually, it's already pre-installed. So normally if it's not on there, you'd go through the uh, uh, the app installation uh, utility, but in this case, um, you create your test, and um, I'm not sure if it's going to, yeah, we can't select them because, because the, they're in use, yeah. Yeah, but you'll be able to select do you want to test as a single drive or in the different uh, RAID types, and then uh, at the different uh, over provisioning levels, and then it takes hours or days, and it runs through and gives you a uh, profile, a nice graph output of. Uh, where the sweet spot is for all those tests. And normally people would run that before they've already put them in to the RAID group? Yeah, or if, well, I mean, it, if it's a new drive, you don't know what to expect, or um, like it's your first time using it, you're probably gonna have an idea of what do I use? But See, if we, don't th we don't think through those processes, you just slam them in and go. Yeah, there's although- no, There's no ceremony. There are def uh, default options where when you start creating a uh, flash volume, it does have a thing pre-checked where do you want to have a some level of over provisioning. And I believe um, you can do that route or you can just use uh, all the raw flash you want. But it, it kind of presents that uh, to you multiple ways to uh, kind of force in that sometimes flash will want uh, some over provisioning uh, to increase your performance or endurance. Right. So for these guys, what do you like these best as then? A flash volume, a cache, a tier? What's your favorite uh, use case for the SATA drive? I mean, I like using them as uh, either uh, direct flash or uh, tiering, but not everyone has the unlimited budgets. Drives are free. Usually people aren't sent drives just to mess around with. And in that case, it's really going to come down to what, op what works best for your scenario. Right. So either if you've got a lot of uh, random workloads, a little bit of flash can go a long way as a cache or a tier. If you've got a workload that you know can benefit from flash as a flash volume, you can do that as well. And uh, these are SATA drives. They're generally inexpensive by comparison to the latest and greatest NVMe efforts. Um, so you just you know need to understand the the, uh, the the qualities of the flash drive versus the alternatives like a hard drive or an NVMe drive if you want truly high performance. But overall, these are priced really well. It's another progression in the Iron Wolf SSD family and um, is is reasonable for any of these sort of moderate use cases. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. We'll be back soon with another review. Thanks.